So date vault automation reduces system complexity, maximizes data quality. It sounds very, very fancy. But this is this is a presentation about how you can reduce complexity in a vault system. I have looked uh, into the challenge of reducing complexity from a from a developer's uh, perspective. My my main focus here is to make it easier for developers to deliver data warehouse uh, data warehouses model with uh, data vault. So my name is Andrea Sending. I'm a consultant and I've been implementing data vault systems for about 10 years. Uh, I have done it for banks in need for regular reporting, uh, NIFI, and in here I've done it for middle-sized retailers, donor organizations, and uh, I write code in C Sharp, Java, and, uh, and SQL, of course. Uh, I'm very experienced in Microsoft SQL Server, and I prefer the Microsoft uh, stack. My first data vault implementation was data vault 1.0, and I did that by hand. And I also called it automation tools for clients at the first data vault 2.0. Sorry, sorry about that. And uh, together with uh, with some very skilled developers, I've developed an own automation tool uh, for data vault. I got my data vault 2.0 certification uh, from Scalefree in 2019. Uh, and I did certification with uh, Michael, uh, Michael Schimke. And uh, by far, data vault is the greatest invention that I have that I've come across. So, as I said before, this presentation about reducing some complexity. But first, uh, why do we really need to reduce system complexity? Well, we need to reduce system complexity because complex things lead to lead to complex solution, and complex solution leads to poor manageability of a system. Poor manageability sets the limitation of how a large or advanced system, uh, how, how large it actually can be. And over the years, I have learned a lot about delivering code. But the one thing that made the most impact is if you can simplify something, make it easier to understand, make it easier to extend, and make it easier to communicate, etc. So this principle of keep, keep, keep it simple, stupid, is always true for any, for any developed software doing automating data warehouses, of course. So if we limit the way we do things without limiting any functionality, but functionality, we achieve the same, we achieve the same goal without uh, with the benefit of using less uh, complexity. And very important when you do that, you don't have to dumb down your system. You should still be able to in a simpler or in a slimmer way uh, deliver the same, the same implementation. So if we constrain uh, what the data vault automation tool can do, but we still be able to deliver the same functionality, then we'd reduce the complexity of the generated system. So, first of all, I'm going to suggest some things that might be uh, radical or provocative about uh, of data vault. So, please be kind to me. Uh, I am happy to be proven wrong. And please don't hesitate to contact me and tell me that I'm wrong. I'm really looking forward to your inputs. I think this is a good way to uh, to evolve. Also, the things I suggest is not uh, mainly all of these are not my idea. I have cherry picked from a lot of other techniques. No one mentioned and no one uh, forgot them. So I I claim that we need a constrained data vault model modeling technique because. Data vault modeling is great, but it's, it's very, very hard. So, and why is data vault modeling great? Because it deals with zero data loss, able to recreate the source system. That explains how you should uh, 
the maximum data quality that you can achieve is by not losing any data. So this is OK, I've answered the second topic of this of this talk. And I don't know if you heard about the Jedi test and if they uh, tell you about the Jedi test on the uh, practitioner certification anymore. But that's something that uh, I learned when I did my certification and it's something that I thought was really, really good. And that is you should always be able to recreate the data exactly as it was in the source. Otherwise, you basically don't have a, a database system. Extensibility of the model is something that is really uh, good. And uh, you can extend the model and you can. And there's really, really lo low need, a uh, low need for refactoring of the data of the model. Uh, if you live in a perfect world, you will never do any in any refactoring. But as humans, we do mistakes all the time and we have to read things. So a slim way to correct your errors is a lot better approach than think that you are uh, that you do everything hundred percent correct all the time. Uh, separation of business key and descriptive uh, data. This is the, one of the uh, foundations, I would say, in ense ensemble uh, modeling, modeling technique. And uh, also an another foundation is the many to many uh, relation that makes sure that you don't paint yourself into a, uh, to a picture. So to the right, the corner, sorry about that. And insert only. Uh, the only way to be auditable is to use an insert only uh, uh, modeling technique uh, when, when loading the data warehouse. It's, uh, it's fast inserts and you don't have to do updates and you can be auditable as I already mentioned. And also this uh, makes the data warehouse by temporal. If you, if you connect uh, some metadata, to, to your uh, batches that you're loading. And the implementation tool that I, have, that I have developed, it forces you to use business data or uh, business data to apply data as metadata to your, uh, your load dates. And of course, almost every task for the data warehouse can be automated. And this is because of the three main building blocks hub link. So with all these uh, great features, there are drawbacks. Uh, data Vault handles data over time. It is, of course, not a drawback, but, it's, uh, but it creates complexity. Time is abstract, and data, uh, and data without any time component has really no, has really no value. Uh, and because of this uh, complexity, it might be, but just be me, but I see a lot of different interpretations of data book. And I'm also missing crystal clear definitions of the main building blocks, the hub links, etc. So I will try to give you my point of view on how I see or understand the concept uh, of time and data uh, in, in data book. So I, I say that data and time can be expressed in, in two ways. Uh, something that has happened and some and the state of something. Data will that claim that time can only be expressed in satellites and in the non visualized things. Also, I claim that we only need two types of satellites to describe all the incoming data into, into a data box. And then the needed types are the delta satellite, the regular, the regular satellite, and the delta record tracking satellite, which is sometimes called effective satellites. Uh, sometimes it's called record tracking satellite. But it keeps track of whether uh, a key was delivered or not to uh, the work. And I claim that this will cover uh, all the cases that we have. And I would also say that a delta record tracking satellite must be implemented for all data sets that you import into your data warehouse, as long as the end table is not a non-historized link. 
otherwise you will lose the ability to recreate data that you insert. So uh, I like to draw on the whiteboard. I'm really not a an artist, uh, but I have taken some pictures uh, from my from our whiteboard. And the, the reason is to explain how I see satellites and what they represent over time. So uh, we see here on the X axel there is uh, time, and on the Y axel we got value. So on the Y uh, y axel we have null, A, and Z. And the first entry into the satellite is valid from the start until the end of time. So basically, here we has got the, uh, the value of A, the property in the satellite has the value of A. Uh, and the second entry that gets inserted into the satellite from, from another batch uh, changes, changes this value from A to Z, and the new value is active until the end of, the end of time. Uh, and the delta rapid tracking satellite, it works the same way, but it only keeps track of the existence of a business key uh, or a hub. Uh, so, sorry. A, a, a business key hub or a relation business keys link. And you can see here that it goes from exist to not exist over time and then back to exist. So probably it was missing uh, between two batches, the specific hub or the specific link. Both of these uh, satellites represent values over time period and the time period can be infinite. It's so, so shown here in the end. And what about the non historized link then? It only represents a point in time. So, this is how you uh, describe events or transactions in, in, in a data vault. Okay. So, physical implementation differs from logical design. This means that. Uh, hubs and links, they don't have a, a time component. So hubs and links are, are just pillars for satellite. All metadata that for time that can be found in a hub or link is redundant. You can find it in a, in a satellite, for instance. So implementations can be done without uh, low rate in, in hubs. So more physical implementations that, that differ from logical design. In data 2.9, you can choose to use uh, use natural keys. And natural keys can be used instead of hash keys for hubs and hub satellites. And uh, we can leave no use for low dates in hubs and the use of natural keys in satellites make hub tables redundant. And then there's no need to do physical implementations uh, of the hubs. And if you don't have physical implementations of the hubs, that means that you don't have to do a join between a hub satellite and a join. And the very fastest way you can do a join is not to do a join at all. You just have uh, the primary key uh, of, uh, of the satellite will contain the value itself uh, together with, with, with the load rate. And in most cases, this is even cheaper uh, than doing the hash keys, because if you do doing the hash keys, you at least have MD5, which is 16 bytes, so you have SHA-1, SHA which is 20, or SHA-2, but I think is 32. And most uh, of the business key will be, will be shorter, uh, will be shorter than that, if you're storing it in, in, a, in a bar code. So, the implementation of data vault is heavily heavily constrained. This requires the link, I'm sorry, the hub to only contain one uh, value. And uh, I have implemented hubs with multiple values, and every time I have regretted it. Uh, so this reduces complexity and that reduces bad implementations uh, of data. And if you really, really need to have two uh, two fields in the hub, then create a link. 
the coach that we've got to put some of that on the edge. edge. Uh, so in data vault one, we learned about sequence keys and the sequence keys can still be used for, for links. Uh, a sequence key makes going between links and that like faster. Someone slower insert time that you have to do because you have to join. Uh, you have to join between um, the link to do the lookup and see what what uh, what value you have to insert into the link. Uh, takes time, of course, but it's a not not a big issue. Inserting data uh, into the data vault is always fast. Performing issues are uh, performing issues arise when selecting data. Uh, not 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 inserting in that. That's my that's my experience. So, so and because we use co-generators, verbose code is less uh, less of an issue, and there's no need for hash disks to determine if a row should be inserted into the satellite. So I would just say that you can write some more verbose code to check should we insert a new value into the satellite or should we not. You say space reduces complexity and make, makes, uh, makes migration easier. Uh, so peg like links. Uh, still, uh, you can use peg like links. They are deprecated in like what 2.0, but I think it's very good, uh, good way to describe subsections of an entity which we still need. Uh, I think it's unwise to use links with driving keys when hubs uh, changes in the in the link. And uh, instead, I would in use multiple uh, multiple links, and uh, that is that is allowed. And instead of using uh, multi-active satellite, I would use peg leg links, so you have the same grain. What I mean by that is that you insert one row uh, for each entity in a satellite, never more than one row. That's uh, the end of the satellites. Uh, and the automation tool should be able to create a link over all the hubs that are all that all not already included in a link. Because why, why do we need that? Uh, because otherwise we won't be able to recreate uh, the exact history of the of the incoming system. So if you have to at least do one link for all the hubs that is coming in one 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 delivery. Okay, so and non-historized links can be peg laid and they, they are peg laid by by definition I would say and they don't need a sequence number because you will have uh, you will have hubs in them, and you will have descriptive data, and you will join from the descriptive. Oh, sorry, you will join from the hubs uh, to that. So, I hope I have some minutes left, and I will show you, demonstrate you, pretty fast how you can uh, how you can do uh, how you can generate. Uh, you can generate data warehouse. You still have so, six minutes left. Six minutes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I will manage in, in, in six six minutes then. So I will share my screen. This is an S. And uh, can you just see my screen now? I have opened this is an S. Excellent. The first thing I will do here is that I will uh, I will delete some uh, some databases that I got here. So we, and also I will go to disk and see that here I've got something that's called uh, repo unit test project. And I will. Okay. So. So what happened here? I have installed this automation tool 
And what it does is that it creates some, um, some stored procedures in the master database. And the first thing is that why the hell would you add stuff in the master database? Because this is uh, a local instance, and this is the stuff that you never bring uh, to a test environment. This is only where you should work. So we have some table value functions uh, here. Sorry, they're not important. Uh, we have some stored procedures, and there I've been inspired by uh, um, object-oriented languages when we have private and we have public functions, and the public functions is the one that we are going to use to generate this data. So we also have tests. So I'll be looking to and see what this test procedure is doing. It's doing something like, okay, set up unit test project. Okay. Then I open a test, unit set up unit test. So we do like this. This one. And fine. So then we see what happens here under our databases. Okay, we get something that's called test data. Excellent. And then we run something that's called create project. And this is the command that you run to create your first first project here. Okay, fine. It, it's running. It run well. And then we refresh here and see that we got something that's called data vault workspace. We open this one and see that we got some tables. And the tables that we got is CM Connection Manager. One button select that, that could not. So like this. And this table is, is empty. Today. So we need connection managers. So we create connection managers, and one of them is going, are we going to use to connect to this uh, test database? And we created them. And then we see here, we go back to this query. We see that, okay, I have entered some, some connection string and connection. connection managers. Okay. And then we're ready to create our first import. So we run the command called create metasheet. And the, and the metasheets is where you do mapping between source system and the metasheet itself. After I run that command, I get some new, new tables here. Pulse pop property database table and snap pulse snapshot. Excellent. So we select and see what's inside these tables. Let's start and then well, this one and see that. Okay. This reminds us of the data that you have been inserted, right? So this is properties. And the, the other one. Is basically, oh, this is the mapping between the source system and the data, but there's no, there's no data. So, so switch back, and you see here that this is a mapping between the source system, and also, I'm sorry to do this a little fast now. This also inserts some test data uh, into the test database. So I run this. I run this command. We go back here and see if we got any new data here. Excellent. We got the we got some mapping um, down there. And if we look into this, this database, this here, here we have some test data. Let's see. Okay. Yes, that one row of test data that we're going to load into the data, right? So back to our test is the procedure. And then we do a build. And this build is like when you compile code in, in Visual Studio, for something. So I compile this 
project, that's called unit test project, and I will work with this uh, responsible attempt. On this, then I wait and see what happens. Okay, second case. Okay, run with but no errors, that's good. And if we refresh this database, we have unit test projects as well. This is a full uh, data warehouse that has been created locally here on this machine. If we look into tables, we have this audit, this Delta Link satellite, Delta Link satellite, effectivity link satellites, row ARIA, stage ARIA, and uh, brand, uh, brand link. So only we have this orchestration tool, this, which is all these uh, procedures. If we look into views, we have the help reviews, data come in, and we have uh, store procedures for loading the data and for handling orchestration of all the, all the packages. Besides that, we have also a new folder that's called Report unit test project. And if you open that, you see that this, these are the objects that we can store in Git. And if you go to deploy, these are the DAC packs and these packs, which are the objects that you are going to use or put in your CI CD process uh, when, you, when you deploy the system. But I will go into DAC pack, I will go into DTS projects, and see what has been generated. I can open this uh, this project. And this will open a project with the integration services uh, packages that that has been generated uh, during the build time. I can open call swap DTSX. And uh, uh, it opens soon on a slow machine. And you have a generated uh, package with, with import functionality. Run this. Hopefully it works well. Yes, no problem. Close Vision Studio, yes. Don't say that. And we've acted in SSMS. And we see here is any data. Did we load any link? Yes, we loaded one link. Did we lose? Did we load any Delta Link satellite data? Yes, we load Delta Link. So basically, that was it for me. Uh, do you have any questions? So I'm very glad to. To answer them. Thank you for your time.